and being inducted this evening in the golf professional and teacher category is Gordon Johnson. All right, got here as quick as you could. Stayed when you got here, I love it. Before we get to getting harmonized, just talk to us a bit about Worcester. I don't know if you know Worcester, Mass. It's the middle of the state. It's cold. There's nothing going on there. How'd you get into the game? It wasn't easy. <laughs> you know, Worcester, Mass, uh, I actually worked in the bag room at a course called Pleasant Valley in Sutton, Massachusetts, which in the days in the 60s actually had both an LPGA and a PGA event during the course of one year because they had a one owner. They had a membership, but they had one owner. And I started there at 14 working for Paul Harney, quite a name in golf. And so from there, I'm just lucky. And that luck continues. I mean, I'm not sure how many people in this room have been harmonized, whether it's from Dick locally or uh, any of the other Harmon boys or Mr. Harmon, Claude Harmon. But calling you Gordo, saw how emotional you were there, how emotional you are right now. What was so special about Claude Harmon Sr., the 48 Masters champ? You know, when I uh, got to be around Mr. Harmon, he had left Wingfoot. His career was kind of, you know, he was just struggling with health. He actually came to Houston to go to the hospital and stuff, but... I was kind of the conduit. He would uh, go out with Dick and Nancy the first night he was there, and then the second night, Gordo, white shirt, blue blazer, khaki pants. We're going to go get a couple pops and have a steak at the Palm. So I, w I would drive him back and forth, so I got him out of the house. And so uh, then I teed up the balls, and he would uh, you know, give lessons at both clubs. He actually gave some at Houston when Charlie was there, but it was – it was just a special time to listen to someone with that kind of authority. Uh, certainly, Craig and Dick are two wonderful professionals, but uh, to be around him, it was, it was that way. And if he got out of the chair during a lesson, you were in trouble. <laughs> he, you were in for a good one. He was legendary, not just as a player, but as a teacher, clearly. And all of the professionals that he taught, from Harmon Tech and Wingfoot, becoming major champions, PGA Tour winners, and PGA professionals. You seem to have carried that care of passing along what it means to be a PGA professional, to be a head professional, to yours in charge. Well, it's, you know, it's just an honor. I mean, Mr. Harmon, we talk about 17 pros, assistants becoming head pros. Dick, uh, excuse me, Claude was asked one time about his assistants. Well, he had seven assistants win major championships. So, you know, having one of my guys get a head pro job was pretty big to me. He would kind of fluff it off but he was always uh, I always knew he had my back he always told me he would turn the sports page upside down so he could see my name at the top as far as the competition was concerned maybe but again 17 head professionals out of your charge out of your instruction your leadership and your mentorship what does that mean to you to have that many people well just you know the room's filled with people that I've uh, been associated with. And, uh, you know, the way I was taught, uh, both Dick and Craig gave me the opportunity to succeed or fail. They never were looking over my shoulder. And uh, I was very proud of that and tried to do the same for my staff, you know, the different clubs. Uh, you know, I've been at three of the greatest clubs in the state of Texas and River Oaks, Preston Trail, and Houston Country Club. So, you know. I guess if you start at the top, you can only go one way. <laughs> that's right. The triple crown right there, that's pretty good. I know Claude Harmon was one of the, I think he was the fourth head professional at uh, Wingfoot, the fifth at Houston Country Club. What does it mean to you to be part of such a small and very exclusive group? Well, I'm the fifth pro to go in from the Houston Country Club. Uh, I'm very proud to follow Paul Marchand as the last one to go in, a very close friend. I think uh, with my induction as the five professionals with six members going in, that Houston Country Club has the most members in the Texas Golf Hall of Fame. Uh-oh. That sounds like a challenge to me right there. So from Massachusetts mm -hmm. over to Rochester, New York, then you find your way down. Well, here I went to, to Tuscaloosa, Alabama first. That's right. And I see your teammate Jerry Pate is here. He's wishing he'd moved to Texas. So it could be in this hall, and, but I'm still an Alabama Pensacola boy now. But. but, you know, I went to college at 17, so the university was very important in my growth. And then to step onto the grounds of a Oak Hill with major championships, and, I mean, it was 
I grew up on a nine-hole public course, so even working in the bag room at seven o'clock at night at Oak Hill, you look outside, it's a pretty beautiful place. And, and it just gave me the confidence, both working with the Harmons, as well as just the memberships that I work for, uh, always encouraged me to provide that for my staff as we go forward. Well, it obviously it means a lot, all the people that have shown up for you to support you here. Like I said, mentioned, your college teammate. Just back to the college days a bit. With Jerry, did you ever get a chance to say anything, or he talked for both of you guys? <laughs> He, he talked for me and with me. So, I'm a good listener. Yeah, Got to be. That's, he taught me. So here you are now, working your way through Alabama, finally getting yourself to Texas. What does it mean to you to be in this hall and to be a Texas golfer? Uh, it's unbelievable, really, the names that are already on that list when I walked around today. Uh, since 1982, the friendships and the people that I've I've met, worked for as members, worked with as professionals. Uh, just unbelievable. And, and the honor of being uh, in any Hall of Fame would be fantastic, but being the Texas Golf Hall of Fame. And uh, i got to point out a couple. Ronnie Glanton, is, uh, he's already been the best pro in the country, never mind the state of Texas. So I've known him for 30 years, competed against him, competed with him, and he's a very special friend. And Mr. Adams, to see his company come forward when I, he was a – at Preston Trail when I was the pro there, and to see what that became. Uh, tell a little story. Mr. Adams, when he joined the club and Adams Golf was taken off, this is the way he thought as a person. He came in and asked me how many kids I had. And I had three children, and he brought me a certificate of Adams Golf stock for reaching my children. Wow. Tells you a bit about one of the other inductees tonight. So clearly it's a class that you love being associated with. Yeah, uh, Brad, actually his brother worked for me in the bag room at Preston Trail, and I knew his dad. So, I mean, it just goes out further into the room. I want to, Lanny was kind enough to speak in my deal, but uh, Lanny's been a friend for 30 years. Uh, he's done nothing but try to help me. I want to thank Thomas Hutton for nominating me in the entire Southern Texas section. That's why I'm up here. So. Love it. Um, so it's do you have anything nice to say about Ryan Palmer? He's the only one we left out so far. Well, I, I know Ryan a little bit through Del Wood because he grew up in Amarillo Country Club and uh, certainly know his game as respect, but the, the way the players that I know on tour talk about him as a person and the way he gives back to the game, it's, uh, I certainly didn't mean to admit him, but he's obviously, he is a special guy. He absolutely is. Any other special people you'd like to thank before we're done? Yeah, I'd like to thank my staff over here. Uh, that came in. I appreciate it. And, and uh, on a serious, there's a great group from uh, Houston Country Club with the club coming in, a lot of board members. But uh, as a group, I, like I said, each club I worked at in Texas, the three great clubs, the membership I learned from, the staff I work with, and I don't mean the professionals, I mean the managers and things at these clubs, the operations that I was able to be part of, only made me a better pro and, and allows me to sit here tonight. Well, he'll sit here and thank everybody, but we're here to tribute the man who is in this year for golf professional. And did you got another one? Well, I got to thank my family. Whoa! Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah. I'm going to walk over here. I'd have, I'd have had to get a separate room. <laughs> but uh, my wife of 35 years has put up with the golf business. Uh, she's a tremendous person. She actually raised a great family. I just watched, but I want to make sure I thank nice. her. Thank you very much. Very nice. So there's a chance we'll get to 36 years. Now there is a chance. Ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Johnson.